In March of 2023, YouTube behemoth Linus Media Group suffered an attack that took three of their biggest channels hostage and started promoting a crypto scam. An employee unknowingly opened an exe file and had their browser sessions copied over to the hacker's computer, including all active sessions for their YouTube accounts. Linus was able to regain access to the accounts, but the situation went from bad to worse. Even after regaining control of the account, there was no way to remove the hacker's access. I'm fairly sure that this particular issue wasn't caused by JWTs, but it is a great example of the kind of vulnerability that you are opening yourself up to when using them as a session token. After a client and a server establish some sort of trust, usually through a sign-in page, the server creates a token for the client. This token, which is sent on every subsequent request, is called a session token. There are two types of session tokens, stateful, which store the user data on the server, and stateless, which store the user data on the token itself. It's kind of confusing, but this adjective is referring to the server state, not the tokens. JSON web tokens, or JWTs, are a very common type of authentication token. I've also seen them used as session tokens. They are used for their portability, security, and have become an industry standard for authorization and authentication. And not without reason, JWTs are very powerful. A JWT contains three parts separated by dots. The first part, called the header, contains metadata. The most important of these fields is the algorithm that will be used to sign the data. This could be an asymmetric algorithm or a symmetric algorithm. The body contains the actual data including the subject, issuer, expiration date, and any custom data you would like to send with the token. Storing this data in the token means that you don't need to store the user's state on the server, reducing the number of database calls you need to make. The final part of the token is the signature. This is created by signing the header and body using the specified algorithm. This ensures that none of the data in the token has been tampered with and is what makes JWT secure. Any service can check the signature meaning you don't need to make additional API calls to validate tokens created by other services. But the extensive capabilities of JWTs have led to overadoption. They can be used as session tokens, but in most cases, they shouldn't. JWTs are an excellent tool to perform one-time authentication between services, but they are not secure as session tokens. I've seen three main criticisms of JWTs. There are implementation issues in libraries, they are overkill, and there is no way to revoke them. The first one is a bit of an overreaction in my opinion. JWT implementations have suffered some issues. The biggest one of these was an issue where by passing a different algorithm or a value of none in the header, libraries would not validate the signature at all. The problem with this criticism is that cryptography is hard and mistakes will happen no matter the standard. What's important is that the mistakes are fixed and best practice updated. The second criticism that JWTs are overly complex is a little more valid, but only because we have a tendency to overuse them. Statelessness is very convenient, leading many to choose a complex token mechanism over a simple state solution. When used as they should be for cross-service authentication, JWTs are about as complicated as they need to be. When used as session tokens, they are absolutely massive and clunky. The third criticism, the inability to revoke them, is by far the most valid. This issue is a smell that something is wrong with the way JWTs are used and that they aren't suitable as session tokens. When a token is created by the issuer, it will be created with a specific expiration date and permissions. A typical expiration date is usually around 15 to 60 minutes in the future. Once the token has been signed and given to the client, these values cannot be updated. This is a huge security risk since a token that falls into the wrong hands cannot be revoked leading to situations like the previously discussed incident. You can remedy this by using a smaller expiration date, but this issue still indicates a bigger problem. To me, the existence of this vulnerability at all is a clear indication that stateless tokens are not well suited for managing sessions. In my opinion, it is not okay that a token may become compromised but still not be revocable. The only way to fix this issue with JWTs or any other stateless token is by using state on the server to track compromised tokens, at which point you may as well make your life easier and store the rest of the user data in state. In almost all cases, we should use actual session tokens to manage ongoing sessions and use JWTs to authenticate a client across services. 
For ongoing communications between a single server and single client, you should use a basic opaque session token. After authentication, the server will create a random string which the client will send with all subsequent requests. This token doesn't need to store any data. Instead, data is fetched from either a normal database or a common cache that can be shared between nodes. This token will be much smaller than a JWT, which adds up when it is sent with every single request, and the implementation is much simpler. It is also server authoritative. You can revoke or update permissions of a token after it has been issued. Unless you have a tangible need for additional features, this should be the default way that you authorize requests. In almost all cases, there is no need to store user data on the token. You can make use of caching to fetch the user data in an efficient way. The data in a JWT cannot even be updated after creation. So in a lot of cases, stateless tokens end up making database calls to retrieve user data anyway. Sometimes you need to authorize a client with multiple services. If you do not want to share session tokens and user data between those services, and you control all the services in question, you can use a symmetric stateless token. When this token is created, it is signed with a private key that is shared between all services that need to authenticate the client. These tokens have some client authority now, since the signed token will mark its own expiration date, permissions, and data. This means that these tokens cannot be revoked until they expire, and permissions cannot be changed. These tokens suffer the same vulnerability that prevented Linus from kicking the hackers out of his account. For this reason, these tokens should really only be used once. Once the server has accepted a stateless token, it should create an actual session token for that client and refuse any subsequent requests made with the same token. A trusted client with an active session token with service A requests permission to talk to service B. It is given a signed token with permissions to talk to service B. The client then makes a single request to service B using said token. This token is no longer valid and service B will create its own session token that the client can now use to continue making authorized requests. Creating a JWT with a symmetric algorithm like HS256 is a very appropriate solution here. Pasito is another example of an implementation that provides a symmetric stateless token. Pasito has the added benefit or drawback, depending on your use case, of being opaque. The user data is encrypted, meaning it cannot be read at all without the key. This is different to JWTs, which are only encoded and can be read freely. The final case is when you need to authenticate with a service which you do not control. In this case, you should use an asymmetric stateless token. JWTs are also a very acceptable solution for this if you would like a transparent token, while Pasito is better if you prefer an opaque one. This token is still stateless, meaning it also stores the user data directly. The difference is that it is signed with an asymmetric key pair. You only need the issuer's public key to verify the token is valid. These tokens suffer the same flaws mentioned in symmetric stateless tokens. Due to the client authority, access cannot be changed or revoked after being issued. For the same reasons, these tokens should also only be accepted once. A trusted client with an active session token with service A, which is external, requests permissions to talk to service B. Service A issues a token that is signed with its private key. Service B uses Service A's saved public key to verify the signature of a request made by the client. With the request verified, Service B may create its own session with the client. If you are only communicating between a single server and client, then it is a waste to create a full JWT. If you are only communicating between services that you own, then it is a waste to use asymmetric cryptography to sign your tokens. If you ever want the ability to invalidate tokens, then you need state, at which point you may as well use a stateful token. But if you have a strict requirement for ongoing stateless connections and the expiration vulnerability doesn't bother you, then feel free to use JWTs as session tokens. I just can't think of a situation where I see the benefit, maybe only if you have an absolute spaghetti mess of microservices. Stateful sessions are not that much overhead, and most requests end up needing a database call anyway.